Hey YouTube, Dusty here, and I'm excited to announce I have officially launched my Patreon page. If you like what I do, you can sign up for tiers like Saiyan, Super Saiyan, and Super Saiyan Rose to unlock exclusive daily content. You can also unlock unique callers from my new Discord channel. Regardless if you become a Patreon or not, make sure you stop by and say hello. Hey YouTube, how's it going? Dusty here, bringing you a deck profile for my latest deck, 3 Collar Vegito Ramp. Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome back to Kitchen Table Meta. Now today for this deck profile, we have a really exciting deck. It's actually one of my favorite decks in set two. It's been so much fun to test. Uh, I've been doing a lot of test footage on Patreon with it. It's just been an amazing deck. And that is Vegito Ramp. Now, Vegito Ramp is, um, you know, one of, in my opinion, three different ways that you can build the Vegito deck. And I know when we first saw Vegito pop up in set two, everybody knew it was going to be a very exciting card, uh, but I didn't expect it to be so hard to build. I mean, there's just so many different ways you can build it. There's so many possibilities, and it's a deck that's going to continue to get better and better and better um, as new sets come out. And so, you know, I think this is something that I just really didn't expect, and I'm excited to talk about. Now, the other two versions of, of Vegito that I think are pretty viable are a low cost aggro version and then a more uh, what I call the hybrid ber uh, version which is one that plays some some early cost guys and also plays some big guys but what the version we're doing today is the ramp version and if you're not familiar with what ramp is essentially it's a style of play where we're going to play objections and we to put out a lot of energy very quickly and then uh, you know use a card we'll talk about in a bit which is, which is Bobbity uh, to get some of our bigger threats out extremely quickly and overwhelm our opponent with these uh, big high cost and energy cost cards so anyway let's get into the deck I don't want to make this too long uh, so we'll start with the first card which is a pretty important card and that's our leader card Vegito. Now, Vegito is a uh, 10,000 attacker with the permanent ability that says each Sun Goku and Vegeta in all of your areas gain red, blue, and green collars. And this is very important for the deck because it allows us to do a lot of really uh, cool, unique things uh, that I'll talk about uh, in a bit. But the first thing I want to just make sure you guys understand with Vegito is that when it says all areas, that's your hand, that's your drop area, that's your deck, that's your and that is also your energy area as well. So that's literally all areas of the game. And so, you know, if you play down a Goku in your energy, it is a red energy, a green energy, and a blue energy, no matter what Goku it is or what Vegeta it is, which is very important to how this deck works. So I just want to make that real clear up front. Next, he has a really cool auto ability that says when this card attacks plays up to one card from the top of your deck in the drop area if that card is red this card gains plus 5,000 power for the duration of the turn and this is very important with the deck because this is our way you know Vegeta doesn't have a way to awaken like a lot of the other leaders especially a lot of the uh the very top tier uh, leaders in the game uh, but what he does do is with this ability is he's allowed he's able to put pressure uh, on awaken leaders which is extremely ext extremely powerful and what this also does is help us get vegetos and gokus into our drop area uh, which will allow us to be even more powerful once we get to the awaken side which let's go ahead and just move right into that uh uh, so the Waken side, he turns into Fusion Warrior, Super Saiyan, Vegito. Uh, this he has this keeps the same permanent where all your Gokus and Vegetas are are uh, red, blue, and green in all areas, which is very important. And he also has a new auto ability, which is extremely scary, very powerful effect that says when this card attacks, draw one card. If there are ten or more total Sun Goku or Vegeta in your drop area, this card gains plus five thousand power and double strike. And so this turns him into a twenty thousand attacker with double strike, which is devastating. And you can easily take over games. In my testing, there was a lot of times where I, you know, quickly filled up my, my field with uh, Gokus and Vegetas and uh, essentially just took the game over with this. Now, the downside with v Vegito, like we said earlier, is he doesn't have it away awaken. So this might seem like, you know, uh, an ability you're not going to get off a lot. Uh, but we have a couple tools to awaken in the... Um, and the deck uh, but one thing to remember about this leader is if you don't ever awaken that's fine because you need time to build up your drop area and that's what his front side does and so don't try to rush to awakening i don't like putting result of training in this deck or tn or anything that kind of shoots you into awakening instead we're going to take advantage of the fact that we might have less cards in, in hand than normal and take advantage of this of his front side ability to still put pressure on our opponent and so that's just something i want to keep in, in mind i've seen a lot of vegeto players just quickly you know try to awaken and i just really feel like that's not the style of this leader i feel like 
Uh, this leader is one of the few leaders that uh, is actually really good if he stays uh, unawakened for a good period of time. Uh, because if your opponent is smart, uh, what they'll do is they'll knock you to five life uh, and leave you there. That way, so they can like wait until they build up board presence and then kill you. But some some uh, lesser skilled players will just leave you at eight for the longest time. And if you do that to Vegito, he will quickly take over the game because his in-game threats are insane. And then once he does fill up that that drop area and does a, finally awaken, uh, he'll just take over the game with this ability. So something to really keep in mind, guys, is play this a little bit differently than normal uh, because both of these, uh, both his front side and back side are very powerful. All right, so let's get into the battle cards. Uh, this is the meat of this deck, and this deck has a lot of them. So let's start out with our one drop, which is Kain Saiyan Sun Goku. Now, he's a one cost, one blue, 5,000 attacker that says, when you play this card, look, at the, uh, look up to seven cards from the top of your deck, choose up to one blue Sun Goku among them, and add it to your hand then shuffle your deck now this guy's insane he's very very good a great great card uh, but in, traditionally in Goku decks, uh, you know, we look at the top seven, we have to pick a, a blue Goku. Now with Vegito, remember, all of our Gokus are blue. And so this is awesome for this card because essentially he lets us look at the top seven and pick any Goku. And because of this card, we tend to run a little bit more Gokus than Vegitas. Also, I think that, you know, overall the Goku cards are just a tad bit better. Well, I say they're a little bit more versatile. Uh, but anyway, you know, try if you're building a Vegito deck to run more Goku than Vegeta. Uh, that way this you get a lot of value out of this card. Okay, next up we have Bulma, God Tempter. Now, this is the one cost, one blue, 1,000 attacker uh, that says when you play this card, choose up to one Whis with an energy cost of four or lower from your deck and add to your hand, shuffle your deck. Now this is essentially what we're going to use to get our Whis. This makes the deck very uh, smooth and consistent. Again, on turn one, we're wanting to play out a Bulma. Turn two, we're wanting to play Objection. And then turn three, we're wanting to play out our Whis. This is going to let us play our Bobbity on uh, turn uh, four, uh, which is extremely powerful. And I'll get more into that once we talk about Bob Bobbity, but the thing you need to realize about this card is this is in here for consistency. Now, I only run three of this card uh, because I just don't like running four because essentially I want one in my hand, uh, either turn one or turn two, but after that, I really don't want any more than that, and uh, Bulma can get kind of awkward um, later in the game. If you flip her over with Vegito's front side ability, it's kind of awkward. You don't really want to play her in energy like you do in some of the other decks. Uh, she's not as good as a combo card because she has to add to your Goku or Vegeta count, uh, and so, you know, she can be very awkward. Now, I've tried versions of just cutting her completely and just relying on trying to draw Whis. Uh, I think that's fine if you want to go that route. I just didn't like how inconsistent the deck was sometimes. When it worked, it felt amazing. It felt super smooth uh, when I, you know, it either started with a Whis in hand or drew one like around turn three. Uh, but if I didn't, then it just felt like kind of clunky. So I went ahead and put three in here just for consistency's sake. But if you want to try to cut it out and run a bulma -less ramp deck, I think that's probably a, a pretty viable strategy. Okay, next up we have uh, the Divine Aid uh, Vado. So this is our zero cost 10,000 combo card. Beto, uh, Vegito is red, so we have to run this card. Uh, it costs two, it's a 12,000 attacker. Uh, essentially when you play this card, uh, this card gains 10,000 for the entire turn, uh, so it allow and we get a draw a card. And so this is kind of our big combo card. This is something that we you usually run four of in every single deck. Uh, so you know it's very important to put in the deck. Uh, you don't really want to play this guy, you know, play Vados out as an attacker. Uh, you just want to remember this is kind of your zero cost combo card. I try to always put four of these, especially if you're a new deck builder. Always start with four of these in your deck. I can't imagine very many times where it's not going to be uh, good to do that. All right, next up we have Bundle of Curiosity Sun Goku. Now, this is the two cost one green Goku that has 10,000 power and when you play them you draw a card now, this is an extremely important card in the deck because this essentially replaces boo in our deck and also gives us a card another goku and so uh what can happen is if you draw this guy early you can play him out draw a card it helps us dig for objections if we need him it helps us dig for weiss if we can't get you know bulma and also late in the game we can play him out as energy and he counts as green blue and red as well so he's just a very versatile card in the deck now something else to remember about this card is he does have ten thousand power uh, which is very very important in the deck because what it allows us to do is allows us to put a lot of pressure on um, on decks that we struggle a little bit with or the decks we need to pressure early. For example, Goku Black is a deck that, you know, really requires us to apply, apply a lot of pressure to him early. Now, our Vegito leader is already very good at that. And so, to, you know, if you play like, you know, turn one Kind, Kind, kind Saiyan Sun Goku, go get this guy, play him out on turn two, draw a card, apply even more pressure on Goku Black. What we can do is we can make put him in a situation where he can't use his ramp ability really, when he really wants to. And also, it makes it hard for him to use his six drop promo uh, Goku Black as well. And so that's our main strategy against that deck. 
And this is a key point of that, uh, a key part of that strategy. Something else we can do is we can pressure other cards with this guy. We can, you know, kill, you know, five uh, five thousand power or even ten thousand power cards. It might be giving us a little bit of trouble. And if our opponent retaliates by killing this Goku, essentially he's free, so we lose nothing, and we also get another Goku in the drop area to, you know, get. Uh, Vegito even closer to his, uh, you know, an insane state on his uh, on his awakened side. And so this is a very versatile card. I love this card. I run four of this guy in the deck, and honestly, I would run five if I was able to. It's just a fantastic card. All right. So next up, we have one of my favorite cards in the deck, and that's Double Shot Super Saiyan Two Vegeta. Now this is a three cost, two red, fifteen thousand attacker. This says at the end of the battle, after you combo with this card from your hand, if your leader card is red, play this card in rest mode. This card is absolutely insane. I love this guy so much. And, uh, you know, it's awesome. He, this card makes up for one of the biggest weaknesses to the Vegito deck. And that's, you know, one of my big reasons why I think this is the deck to watch as we get more and more sets. Because, like I said before, you know, Goku and Vegeta are pretty popular characters in Dragon Ball. And so it's probably uh, pretty safe to say that we're going to get more Gokus and more Vegetas. And when that happens, this deck is going to get more and more consistent and have more and more tools. But right now, it's really lacking with early cost Vegetas that do something. You know, we have the Gokus that do that, but we really don't have any Vegetas that do that. So this gives us essentially a one-cost Vegeta uh, that's a 15,000 attacker and can really do some fun stuff with the deck. Because if you can get a Goku and a Vegeta out early, uh, you really put a lot of pressure on your opponent because they don't know if you have a Vegito in hand. And if you have a Vegito in hand plus a Vegeta and a Goku in play, you can really put a lot of pressure and really punish your opponent, opponent very quickly. And so sometimes they make you know, uh, some weird attacks or they, you know, use like a Beerus to kill like your, you know, Vegeta, uh, just to stop you from being able to uh, Union Patora. And so this card is super important in that kind of uh, strategy, you know, if we get into those kind of matchups. Now, one thing to remember about this card too, is it does uh, trigger on your turn and your opponent's turn. And so sometimes you can combo with this card, throw them out in rest mode on your turn, just to, if you don't think your opponent can attack and kill it. You can also save it when your opponent attacks you on his turn, uh, you can use on his turn so that way you can attack him, you know, with this card on your following turn. Turn, uh, which is super fantastic. Now, there's been situations where my opponent has essentially blown themselves out. You know, they'll play like uh, the one, especially in the Vegeta matchup, they'll play like the one cost double strike card. They'll put that on their guy. And then I just go, okay, cool. I'll play Vegeta out with this. And I'll use like my, my Goku to combo. And I've essentially survived for free. And then next turn, I have a 15,000 attacker. Plus, I just put a Goku into my drop area. So, you know, I'm even stronger on my Vegito side. So this card is insane. Has a lot of really good uh, potential in the deck. And I just really love it. Now, I run three of this guy in the deck. Uh, if you want to run four, I could see that. But, you know, I started with two. And he was just, he just really overperformed. And so I bumped it up to three. Okay, so next up we have Weiss the Resting Attendant. Now this is the four cost, two blue, 10,000 attacker. It says when you play this card, add one card to your energy from the top of your deck. Now we run three in the deck just to make it um, very consistent. Now I did try a, a strategy where I ran two in the deck, uh, which was which was fine. I think that's probably uh, closer to the right number, but there was a couple games I played where both were in my life and it just really slowed down my ramp. And so I, you know, I think two is a little greedy, uh, but if you pull it off, it's definitely very rewarding because what you don't want to do is get this guy off of Vegeta's ability uh, whenever he attacks his Vegito ability. Uh, that happened to me one game too, where I literally like the first uh, turn I just, I just attacked with Vegito and I milled this guy off the top and my other one was in my life. And so I was just like, okay, well I'm out. So I decided to run three. I think it's probably pretty important to do that. Uh, and since we run three Bulma as well, you know, we can essentially play Bulma first, go get our Whis, and then safely attack with our Vegito. Now, one thing that kind of stinks about this card is there are situations where I'll play him and the top card will be like a, a red card uh, or a blue card that's like not a Vegito or uh, a, Go a Vegeta or a Goku. And so that kind of makes the deck kind of awkward. It can make it work kind of weird with Xeno Button, which we'll get into in a second. And so this guy can set you up to be kind of weird. Uh, again, uh, if you get more of him, I wouldn't play him as energy unless, you know, you just have to. It's okay to play him as energy because he's a blue card, which is the best energy for the deck to run on because it, it essentially uh, it, it will still work with Xeno Button. But if you have to, you know, playing him as a combo card isn't terrible, guys. You know, you can do some really, you know, uh, aggressive plays by using this card as a... Um, as a combo card if you need to so again not really a whole lot to say just be very careful with this card i wouldn't play more than one in a game unless you just really need to you know to ramp up one more card and just be very careful with uh with milling the top card of your deck so you don't hit something you know more important later down the road okay Next up, we have 
uh, Raging Attacker Vegeta. Now, this is the four cost, uh, two green, 20,000 attacker with double strike. Uh, he has counter attack, play this card from your hand. Uh, and then he has the auto, when you play this card, choose up to one of your opponent's battle card with the energy cost of four or less and KO it. Now, one, one, something I want to talk about, about this card that I've noticed a lot of players kind of messing up on is the counter part of this card is actually playing it. Uh, that's it. It's not playing it and KOing something. So if you play this guy out as a as a counter, and then uh, you know your opponent plays a, a counter card like Cold Bloodlust, for example, you actually don't get to combo something. I mean, you don't get to kill something. I'm sorry. Uh, now something else to remember is if you play this guy out for four, and your opponent uses Bad Ring Laser, the card actually does go to your drop area. So those are two kind of confusing situations I've seen people talk about with this card. I just want to kind of clear those up before I get into the card. Now. This is a Vegeta card, which is super fantastic. He also has double strike and 20,000, and he can you know KO uh, a card. Now, I use this card mainly because he works so well with Zeno Button, which we'll get into in a bit. Uh, but this card and the next card are kind of our uh, counter spells uh, without having to run too many extra cards, which is really important with this deck. You don't want too many extra cards because if you have them, uh, and like I said, if you mill them off the top uh, with Vegito, you don't get the 5,000 boost. Also, it works kind of awkward with our uh, energy as well, and so you just don't want that many any extra cards and so we run this guy in our next card because it kind of again gives us counters without having to run those extra cards now Vegito is very strong uh he also can targets four drops which there's tons of them that are playable in the current uh, meta we have kale we have jiren we have beerus you know there's just an endless amount of good four drops in my opinion for the four cost slot is the most competitive slot it's the most powerful slot currently in the game and so every deck has access to some four drop and so you're probably going to get value off of this guy when you play him Okay, next up is our uh, Determined Striker SSB Sun Goku. That's the four cost, one blue, 20,000 attacker, and he has counter attack. Play this card and negate that attack. Uh, permanent, when activating this card's counter, if you have three or less life, you may place two Saiyan from your hand in the drop area. If you do so, reduce the energy cost of this card by three for the duration of the turn. Now this guy is absolutely fantastic. We run two of these in the deck. I used to run three in the deck, but there were certain situations where I didn't need them. Now in the hybrid deck, we actually run a lot more of these because you know the way that deck works. I'm not gonna get into that too much, but I do wanna say this guy serves a dual purpose for the deck. The first thing he does is he gives us another counter, which is awesome. He's also a Goku, which is great for the whole you know strategy behind Vegito. Also a cute thing you can do with this card is you he lets you uh, discard two Saiyans from your hand. And so there'll be situations situations where you'll have like eight cards or sometimes seven cards in your drop area and you just need to get cards out of your hand to turn on Vegito's um, awaken side. And so what you can do is you can play this guy out for his one cost by discarding two sands out of your hand and you can play him for one blue, which is, you know, fantastic and add, um, add those resources to your drop area to turn on the awaken side, uh, which is, you know, a really good play. Now he doesn't have double strike. I feel like if he did, I would probably, you know, without a doubt run three, maybe four of him because he would be a really good threat on top of his uh, awesome utility. Uh, however, he doesn't get that currently. And so because that, again, we run two. Now this card again, guys, uh, is just super fantastic in the in control mirrors. He's a great tempo play. Um, he works very well with Zeno Button, which is one of the reasons why we even have Zeno Button in the deck. And so you know, just make sure that you know when you run this guy. I've seen a lot of people just almost immediately play this guy down as energy because they're like, oh, I don't need a counter right now. Uh, also, he can be searched out by Sun Go Kind Sun saying Goku, which is just you know awesome. So later in the game, if you really like, man, I really need a counter right now, I'm going to lose. You can play Kind Saiyan Sun saying Goku out and go search for this guy so he's just a very very versatile threat i really really like him and uh, you know honestly i would probably put uh, maybe two more on the sideboard because i think there probably are some matchups where you'd want to run four of this guy okay next up we're going to run four of vegeta prince of speed now this guy is awesome i love him so much uh i've talked about a lot in my other you know, videos where i say he's one of my favorite cards and honestly he just plays really well in this deck now he costs five he costs three blue and he has two and two two blue and two evolve vegeta play this card on top of another vegeta uh double strike and then when you play this card if you have five or more energy draw two cards now, this guy serves a, a big dual purpose in the deck again he's a vegeta which you know the deck kind of lacks a little bit of uh and he lets us draw two cards when he comes to play which is a fantastic card when we're playing against hand destruction it's also really good if we're like you know if people don't want to awaken us and so if we're going through our chain you know we go one drop into objection into weiss uh, you know once we have five energy we're like okay we have two cards in hand you know we didn't get our bibbity you know or bobbity we didn't get him crap 
what do we do? Well, if we have Vegeta Prince of Speed in hand, we can play him out, draw two more cards, and start digging for that Bobbity or digging for those more threats, start filling our hand back up, which is really, really important. This deck runs very low on cards in hand because your opponent will not awaken you, uh, which is fine because we have multiple ways in the deck to deal with this. Uh, but in case, you know, we do just need a dig, this guy does a fantastic job of doing that. So, you know, he's a very versatile threat. He's also insane to get off of Bobbity. I had a game where I played Bobbity out, searched the top, uh, top seven, and had two of these guys. And so I essentially put two of them down and just drew four cards. And it really felt like my opponent just couldn't win off that. Uh, and so very, very strong card, very, very powerful, and you know, just a perfect fit for the deck. All right, next up, we have Rapid Onslaught Super Saiyan Blue Sun Goku. Now, this is the five cost, one blue, 20,000 attacker. Uh, this is the dashback promo. Uh, it also has Evolve, one blue and two on the Sun Goku. It has Double Strike, and it says, when you play this card, uh, you may choose one card in your life and place it in the drop area. If you do so, this card gains critical, uh, critical for the duration of the turn. And so if you, when you play this guy, if you take... Uh, one card from your life and put it in the drop area, he'll get double strike, because he already has that, and he also gets critical. So double strike critical combination is is insane, very, very powerful. Uh, but the thing we want to do with this card, we run two of this in our deck, by the way, and one thing we want to do with this card, is I've seen a lot of people just play it out almost immediately. You know, they'll be at seven life, and they'll just be like, wrap it on slot, now I'm at six. And that's not really what we want to do with this card. What we want to do is we don't want to awaken quickly. Again, that's something that's very weird about this deck, but we want to set back. We want to keep as much life as we can, make our opponent have to attack us, give us that card advantage. Or if they don't want to do that, then we have a much better late game than most decks do. Uh, and so we'll quickly overwhelm them if they just let us set there of eight life. And so what a lot of good players will do is they'll knock you down to five life, and then they'll wait until they can build up the board a little bit, and then they'll and then they'll like you know, swing in with their alpha strike. And so they essentially give you four cards. I'm sorry, they'll give you three cards, and then set back, wait, and you know kind of laugh at you. Uh, and then you know you're like, I can't wake and I can't awaken. Uh, but this guy essentially lets us do that. We can play him off of Bobbity, and he's a pretty good play. We also can just play him on top of one of our Sun Gokus, either the one drop or the two drop. Take that last life, have a strong attacker to continue to put pressure on our opponent and awaken. And if they do kill or kill him on the attack back again, it just adds to our awakened uh, Vegito state. So this is a very versatile card. We only run two because we don't probably want to play this guy until about five or six. This isn't a you know if you're playing the more aggressive version of Vegito, you'd probably play four of this and just try to be really aggressive and get him out super fast almost like a saiyan kaba uh but that's not how we play him in this deck this literally is only in the deck uh to either finish a game or put a lot of pressure on our opponent later in the game or to get that last damage to knock us from five to four okay next up uh, oh, actually, one thing I'll say is if you can't fit this guy in your deck, guys, because uh, he is a promo, and he's kind of a limited promo as well, if you can't fit him in your deck, uh, I would really just put in more, you know, put in another Goku and another um, uh, Vegeta card if you can. Uh, one card that you could replace this card with that has a similar effect is the God Charge Vegeta, the one that has critical and dual attack. Uh, you can maybe replace it with that, or just put another counter Goku in as well, uh, and just, you know, kind of play it to your play style, so... Okay, next up we have uh, Ghost Attack Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks. So this is the five cost, three red, 20,000 attacker that has Evolve, two red, and two on a Gotenks. It also has, if you have four or less cards in your hand, this card and all of your Ghost Tokens gain double strike. And then we have, when you play this card, play three Ghost Tokens. Uh, that have ghost tokens have uh, 15,000 power and so this guy gives you so much power for five energy he essentially gives you 45,000 power worth of tokens and 20,000 just in himself uh, which is just bonkers I mean it's extremely efficient it's a very good card probably one of the most powerful cards that come out of set two now, what's awesome with this deck, again, like we've been talking about throughout the, the deck profile, is a lot of people want to keep you low on cards, they don't want to awaken you, and they'll, they'll set back and, you know, try to play their game plan while, you know, trying to starve you of cards. If they do that, this guy just really takes over the game. We can play him out, get three tokens with double strike. If they don't have a Sensu Bean, we start putting tons of pressure on them. And eventually, they have to attack us to awaken us, or they're just going to lose. This guy will just single-handedly take over the game. Now, if you're struggling getting cards out of your hand, you can also use the counter Goku we talked about earlier to pitch two Saiyans out of your hand to get down to the four or less that's needed to activate this guy, which is a, a fun way that you can use, or I guess a cute way to, to get to that uh, threshold. You can also play this guy, guy off of Bobbity, which is an amazing play. Uh, we only run two in the deck, but there was one 
one game I played where I played out Bobbity and got both of them. And it just felt like my opponent just it actually just lost. I mean, he had six 15,000 double strikers plus two of this guy out. I mean, it just really just took over the game. So if you want to, you guys could try to run three. Uh, I just felt like, you know, if I played one a game, that was enough, right? I feel like playing two is almost like a win more type situation. Uh, the first one usually put me in a situation where I couldn't lose or pretty close to win the game. And so I felt like it's redundant to play a third one, but it could be very strong in some matchups. So maybe putting one in the sideboard would be uh, ideal. All right, next up, we have really the, the card that makes the deck run and really is why the ramp version, in my opinion, is one of the strongest versions of Vegito, and that is the six cost, two red, mind controlling Bobbity. Now this is a 10,000 attacker that says, when you play this card, look it up to seven cards on the top of your deck, choose up to two red battle cards among them with 25,000 or less power, uh, other than Evil Wizard Bobbity, so you can't chain them, uh, and it says, and play them, uh, then shuffle your deck. Now, what this card allows us to do is because all of our Gokus and all of our Vegetas are red in addition to their color, we can almost get every, well, actually, in this deck, we can get every threat in our deck and play it out. All of our threats that aren't Goku and Vegeta are red, and so it allows us to essentially look at the top seven cards of our deck, pick the two best threats for that situation, play them out, and try to take over the game with it. Uh, this is a fantastic way to play this deck out. I've also seen versions, and I probably would put a couple on my sideboard, where they run the Vegeta, uh, I mean, Vegeta what the heck frees up five cost uh car that bounces something and so they'll play bobbity out because no one wants to kill bobbity then they'll play vegeta bounce bobbity you know kill one of your guys and just play bobbity out the next turn uh it's you know there's so many possibilities this card opens up it's a very scary card uh and just you know this deck runs off this this is the toolbox of the deck now we only run three because i felt like four was just a little too aggressive i felt like you know i wanted to open up some more slots to put in more um essentially uh match oriented uh cards uh, like the counter cards and the vegeta uh, but if you want to run four that's fine i don't think it's a uh, wrong to do that i just feel like it's a little bit more efficient if you just knock it down to three Okay, next up, we have Awakening Rage Sun Goku. This is our six cost, two green, 25,000 attacker that has three green and two on a Sun Goku Evolve. Double strike, permanent if Krillin is in your drop area. This card gains triple strike. Uh, unfortunately, he will never be in our drop area. And then it says, uh, when you play this card, choose any number of an opponent's battle cards of which the total car, uh, cost adds up to six or less and KO them. Again, another really important card in the deck because this allows us to uh, destroy... Um, Wait, let's, let me read this real quick. Uh, battle cards of which the total cost. Okay, I was making sure it didn't say something specific. Uh, yes, yeah, so this this allows us to to uh, clear out tokens. This allows us to you know to clear out you know essentially if we get behind. You know I've had you know a game where I've literally my opponent played out the Gotinks, the red Gotinks. Um, past turn you know he attacked me with it. I survived with, with you know different cards and that past turn. So then I play Bobbity. I get this card killed all his tokens uh, and killed his. Um, his uh go tanks and then off my second bob my second bobby trigger i got uh the vegeta prince of speed and drew two cards and it just really felt like almost unwinnable for him you know it's like i just i literally just play this guy out and just destroyed your field plus drew two cards plus have two threats out uh so it's just insane this guy you know can really take over the game now again i've seen a lot of versions run three of this guy i think that's fine it's just again i like to have more uh, less of threats so it makes my bobby more versatile but if you you know in your meta if you're playing you know uh, in a meta where your opponents have a lot of cheap cost uh, threats out, then go ahead and grab it. But you know, I'm expecting to play against a lot of Fusamasu, uh, and in those in that kind of meta, you know, this card isn't the best, and so that's why I don't run more than two. Okay, next up we have Repeated Force Vegito. Now you run two of this guy in the deck. This is a 25,000 Union Patora 5 uh, on a Sun Goku and a Vegeta. Uh, it says whenever you place this card uh, in active mode on top of the two specified cards. Uh, and then it has Triple Strike. And it says when this card attacks, this card gains plus 5,000 power for each Sun Goku and Vegeta in your drop area for a duration of the turn. This guy's your game ender. He's your finisher. Real quick, guys, something to remember about Union Patora is that uh, those cards, essentially, it comes into active mode. And so you can attack with your guys. And so you can play like Bobbity uh, on a turn, get like a Vegeta and a Goku, attack with them. If they survive on the next turn, you can attack with them again and then uh, Patora into this guy. Now this guy's ability can just really take over the game. Plus 5,000 for, you know, uh, each Goku and Vegeta in your in your, um, in your drop zone can make this guy hit like a truck. And he has triple strike. And so this guy is normally just going to get counterspelled um, or negated. It happens to me all the time when I play this guy. Essentially, I'll play all my threats. I'll keep attacking. I'll keep attacking. It seems like no matter how much pressure I put on my opponent, they always have a negate ready for this guy, uh, which might, which because I actually cut this guy out in one of my versions, I was like, he's just not good enough. He doesn't do anything. And then I realized I never had a big threat to 
finish the game. And what I started realizing was this guy was so powerful that he was literally just stripping cards out of our opponent's hand because they had us not get hit by this guy, which opened up our other threats to really finish out the game. And so this guy is insane. The fact he can make use of your um, uh, your your little Gokus, your one drops and two drops, even your combo uh, Vegeta can really make it so you just have tons of big threats. I love this guy and really would recommend running two. I wouldn't run any more than that, but uh, you know if you think that this is a card you need, you know I don't think it's necessarily wrong to run more than that. I just don't like to have you know I like to have a lot of Goku images in the deck. And then finally, the last battle card we'll talk about is Ultimate Force SSB Vegito. Now this is Unipatora 5 red on Sun Goku and Vegeta. It has ultimate, which means you can only put one copy of this guy in your deck. It's very similar to how it's very sim uh, similar to how the uh, legendary cards work in Hearthstone. He also um, has triple attack and triple strike, which means he can attack three times for triple uh, attack or for, for three life energy cards. Uh, and he gains 40,000 power, which is, I mean, this guy is a game ender. I've seen plenty of my uh, opponents, you know, play this guy out and I have no answer. I just lose. Now this guy is a little weak to a couple cards. He's a weak to the, to the Gohan counter card. He's weak to Mafuba. I've even seen people use Pilaf against this guy and take away his triple attack. So he only attacks one time and then kill him on the next turn with like a Beerus. Uh, but you know, either way, this guy is either going to win you the game or put you in a situation where your opponent has to have tons of stuff to survive. And Either one of those scenarios is very good for you. So again, very strong card. Now, if you don't have this guy, because he is kind of expensive and pretty rare, I would just either run another one of the seven cost Vegito we just talked about, or run one of the, uh, we call it the big nose Vegito, uh, Vegito, but it's the one that you mill 10 cards off the top of your deck and then choose a Vegito and put on top of him in active mode. Uh, that can also be a pretty good game ender, but I just didn't like how that card ran. I tested it a lot and just would rather, I think, run the, uh, the third Vegito or just use that slot to run in like another counter Goku or, you know, a, a, another Goku or Vegeta that your deck might be uh, lacking, uh, depending on your meta. Okay, so let's move into the extra cards. Tell you what, we have a whole bunch of them to talk about, so let's uh, quickly get into these. We, we have a whole total of three of them. Uh, first up, we have two Zeno Button. This guy, uh, it's counter attack, switch all of your blue energy to active mode. If we you know, do our energy correctly, which is if we're putting in uh, you know, Whises and Bulmas we're not using, uh, and our Gokus and Vegetas in our energy row, uh, all of our energy should be blue, so this allows us to essentially tap out for Bobbity and then use Zeno Button to ready our uh, energy and then use uh, our uh, ready energy to play like our counter Goku and our counter Vegeta to protect our threats and stop our opponent from attacking us. Next up, we have four objection. Uh, this is just our ramp card. It says uh, active main, choose up to one card from your hand and add it to your energy. I tested a lot with only three of these in the deck. I kind of liked the way that ran, but then there was certain, you know, uh, matches where I felt like I lost because I didn't get an objection. And so I went back to four. Now, if you want to cut this to three, be my guest. I think it's fine. Most of the game, you're still going to be able to get this in your hand if you mulligan properly and dig with your two, uh, with your, uh, with your, um, your draw cards, uh, but there are some sometimes that you just won't get this card, whether you run four or three, and those games feel very rough, and so I think it's important enough to have an objection on turn two that you should probably run four. And then finally, we have two Mafuba. Now, this is the uh, two-cost counter battle card attack. It says negate the attack and place this card on the attacking card. At the end of the opponent's next turn, place this card and only this card in the drop area. Uh, as long as this card is attached on top of another card, that card is not treated as a battle card and the skills cannot be activated. So what this does is when you counter uh, a card with this, you essentially just put it on top of your opponent's card. Uh, your opponent can't attack, can't use that card, but that card is also considered not a battle card, and so we can't kill that card with like a Vegeta or you know any of our removal. Uh, now, one thing to remember is this did get ruled in the FAQ that after it leaves, uh, the card is in rest mode. However, it did just today get errated to go back to rest mode. And so after this card leaves, it will be in, uh, it will be in active mode after this card leaves. So that's, a, that's something they're gonna update the FAQ, but they announced it in the email and uh, you know they apologize for the, um, the confusion. Uh, this card's super uh, good in certain matchups. And the reason why we have this card in the deck is to really help us uh, with the tempo war. It, it's also a lot better than Weiss's Corrosion or whatever. Uh, in um, what if we have Zeno button in the deck? I mean, if we have if we have like a Zeno button turn, uh, it's also really good uh, in um, indestructible uh, matches. So if we're against like Fusamasu or Goku Black, this card is invaluable to shut down their big threats and let us kind of continue to build up our board. Now, that's it for the extra cards. It's actually it for the deck. There's a couple things I want to talk about with the deck uh, before we get out of here. The first thing is you might notice two exclusions from the deck. 
One is uh, Sinsu Bean, uh, which I love that card and I definitely have them in the sideboard. So please put them in the sideboard. However, I felt like the only matchup that the that the uh, Sinsu Bean was good for was was good for the um, was good for the uh, Gotinks matches where you know our opponent went and got Gotinks and had the tokens out, and we really needed Sinsu Bean to essentially uh, survive. But what I found out in my testing is we can play around that by just keeping cards in our opponent's hand. We can attack him, be aggressive, make sure they always have cards in their hand. And usually we're at such low life that our opponent can't kill us with the, the Gotenks tokens, and then we just use our Goku to clear them and you know survive that turn. Uh, the second card that you might be noticing that's missing is Weiss's Corrosion. This is a card that I love. It's one of my favorite cards. In my opinion, it's the best blue card in the game. However, I really felt like this deck did not want too many extra cards and I feel like Weiss's Corrosion might be a little bit of a trap in this deck. However, I do like it. And so, uh, you know, I, I usually put them in the sideboard. I do have versions I've played with it. So if you want to run them in the deck, feel free to. Uh, those are two extremely powerful cards. And the last card that you might notice isn't here is the uh, Super Saiyan 3 uh, Sun Goku promo card. I think this card is very powerful and it's actually not a bad target with Bobbity because it actually turns Bobbity into a threat. Uh, if you're trying to be really aggressive, if you're against the, Sun, uh, the uh, Goku Black decks, uh, it's possible that you might want to put a couple of those in your sideboard so you'll have access to that to kind of put the finishing touches uh, to Goku Black, you know, a turn before they can kill you. Uh, however, your token, the Gotenks tokens aren't red, uh, and so that's why, you know, I really felt like this card wasn't exactly what this deck wants to do. Uh, however, in the more aggressive versions of the deck, or like the hybrid version, uh, you, you know, that card is fantastic. I just feel like in the ramp version, it's not quite what the deck wants to do. All right, guys, if you have any more questions about the deck, if there's anything that I didn't cover in here that you have questions about, always feel free to uh, ask me in the comment section. I'll do my best to answer the questions as fast as I can. The other thing is, if you want to see me, uh, you know, I'm going to try to do more of these deck profiles. Next week, I'm really going to try for two. I have two really spicy decks I wanted to do deck techs on. But if you guys want to watch me build those decks, if you go to my Patreon page, you can actually uh, subscribe to the Super Saiyan tier, which is $10, and you can see videos, exclusive videos, of me building the decks and playtesting them on Octagon. So guys, thank you again so much for watching. Thank you all so much for the support. This week has been absolutely insane for me, guys. I have had so much kind words, so much support through Patreon, so many more views on my videos. We're almost to a 1,000 views. I mean, I'm sorry, a 1,000 subscribers. It's just been an insane week for me, and it's all because of you guys. I know you guys give me a lot of credit, you know, for answering your guys' messages and being, you know, uh, I guess, nice to you guys, but honestly, you guys are the ones that are being nice and supportive to me, and the least I can do is answer your messages and help you guys out. So you guys will just, again, just never know how much it means, not only to me, but to my family for you guys supporting you and just for, for supporting me and giving me so much love. So, okay, I'll stop rambling, but I love you guys. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Again, any questions, let me know, and we'll see you next time.